Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. And thank you very much for joining this webinar. Um, I'm really delighted to welcome Colm from Dublin City University. Uh, I'll let Colm introduce himself um, in a moment. Um, uh, I'm, uh, my name is Jacob Kessner. I lead EDUCO uh, here in Ireland. Um, and uh, Colm and I are both talking to you from our homes. We're, we're, um, we're all working from home here in Ireland. And I hope that, um, that Colm, you might start by telling us a bit about the, the COVID-19 situation in, in Ireland, what it's really like on the ground, um, how DCU is supporting its students who are currently studying here, because I know the support is, is really exceptional that you're providing. Um, uh, then I'd love to hear from you, you know, anything that students who are um, offer holders right now or who are applying for Ireland uh, are applying to come to DCU in September, anything that they need to know. Um, and then, of course, you know, finally, let's um, let's not let COVID-19, um, you know, be the only thing that we talk about. DCU is a great institution um, with a lot of strengths. Um, I'd love to hear from you a, a bit about that and uh, tell us tell us why we should be congratulating offer holders for their offers from DCU or for those without offers yet. Um, you know, why they should be considering, uh, considering applying. Um, so look, over to you, Colm, uh, to, to kick us off by introducing yourself. Thanks very much, Jacob, and hi, everyone. Uh, it is uh, really a pleasure to get an opportunity to, to chat to everyone. And obviously, it is a unique time uh, as the world goes through this COVID-19 um, situation. Uh, I suppose I'll, I'll talk a little bit first about what's happening in Ireland, and then I'll go into the presentation and talk about DCU and DCU's response. Um, as Jacob said, in Ireland, we're all working from home at the moment, and the current restrictions that we have are in place until the 4th of May. The plan at the moment is to begin to then ease those restrictions beginning the 5th of May, um, and, and to, to do that on a phased basis and to see how uh, that will roll out uh, over the, the next few weeks and months. But it is going to, to be a situation um, that, that takes some time. But I do think Ireland's response has been very good to the, the situation, I think in particular in relation to uh, international students. Ireland can be commended, certainly in comparison to, to some countries. We have made sure that uh, students who had been working part time um, and lost their jobs as a result of the COVID-19 situation were able to apply for a special emergency payment. Uh, students who, who have a job in the current situation can continue to work full time as long as they do their online studies. But there's been a recognition in Ireland that anyone who's currently working is doing an essential job. And so those students are part of the essential workforce. You know, we have uh, many international students in Ireland who are working either in retail, in, in the grocery sector, who are working in food production, who are working in uh, health services, and they're making an, an enormous contribution. And Ireland has recognized that. And I think that that has been really welcome. So it has allowed students, I suppose, with the, the extra free time that they maybe have had to, to fill the, you know, to fill that with some work to earn some uh, extra income, but also to continue their studies because classes continue in Ireland and all the institutions have moved to an online learning model. And I think for uh, DCU that seems to have worked very well. Uh, there are a number of different videos on the, the DCU YouTube channel. I would urge people to check them out. You'll hear from our students and from faculty talking about that experience of, of moving online. I even interviewed um, a, a DCU international student from India on a podcast that I have about his experience. He was um, very happy with how it had all gone. So um, things things have changed, but things are still going on. Even, even in this new normal that we have, uh, it is not like everything is shut. Uh, and, um, you know, it, business does does continue, students continue to learn. They, there have been changes made to exams and assessments, but students will still have exams and assessments, will still graduate, will still get their qualifications. There is no change to that. So that's maybe an overview of the, the situation where we are. 
and I think we will begin to see things probably change in in the next uh, probably uh, week to 10 days in terms of the easing of, of those restrictions and then it'll be a case of monitoring that. So maybe what I'll do right now is I will share my screen and then launch in to the um, into the, the PowerPoint. So let me let me do do that and we'll go from the beginning. Now hopefully everyone can see that uh, PowerPoint. Um, so I'm, I'm going to probably initially just talk in relation to DCU, which is Ireland's University of Enterprise. DCU is celebrating its 40th year this year, so it is uh, one of Ireland's youngest universities and it is a wonderful institution. I am very fortunate to have experience of a number of different institutions in Ireland. I studied at UCC, I worked at Trinity College Dublin, I worked at University College Dublin and now I'm working at Dublin City University and I think it uh, stacks up as well as any of those institutions and I, I don't I have never been disadvantaged in Ireland um, or anywhere I, I worked in America for some time by studying at UCC I think all of the uh, universities in Ireland are top class institutions and I think DCU given uh, the rankings, given what it is good at, given the graduate em employment opportunities, stacks up and can hold its head high. And I think I, I'll talk a little bit more about some of its real strengths, but it's particularly in terms of innovation, creativity, um, and in, in those areas that it is really, really strong. Um, so one of the things I thought, maybe ju just a, a couple of points, um, you can see where uh, ranked in the top 100 young universities in the world, we're the fastest growing institution in Ireland and you can also see there, um, you know, DCU is committed um, to, uh, I suppose, growing sustainably and I think helping, uh, you know, society at large, but also really importantly, um, there's a focus at DCU on employability and ensuring our students get jobs. And they do. I think you, you can see there that we were named Ireland's uh, leading university for graduate employment and we were no, named number 19 in the world. And that was in the QS rankings. And I think that's a testament to all of the hard work that the staff and academics and the students themselves put in. I think you can, it, it is proof positive that DCU graduates not only get jobs, but they get very good jobs and they're very sought after by employers in the market. So I just thought um, for those of you who mightn't be that familiar, you can see uh, where, where DCU is located. So we're located in Dublin, which is Ireland's capital city. And DCU is located very close to the, the city centre. Um, in, in Irish terms, Dublin is a big city um, by many uh, you know, countries around the world. And I know we have a lot of people on from India. Dublin would be small in terms of population, but its impact is enormous. And we'll talk about this a, later on, a little bit later on. But Dublin really is the Silicon Valley of Europe. The, the number of tech companies, um, bioprocessing, pharma that are based in Dublin and um, Dublin's impact is, is really, really impressive. And DCU is right in the heart of that, right in the heart of the, of the city. So it means that there are great connections with industry and it means that students have the opportunity in their, their studies to either sometimes get part-time jobs, to do uh, internships at undergrad level to do the practicum to work with industry for uh, in their research for postgrad studies so there are a lot of opportunities in in Dublin and we're located right there in the heart of things now uh, I I don't think any presentation at the moment could talk a little bit or has to talk a little bit around the, the COVID situation and I think DCU has been very proactive and really looked to offer students certainty so 
right now in Ireland, all university campuses are currently closed. All, all educational institutions are closed. And I, I think that's the case in, in many places in the world. There are travel restrictions in place. And um, while we, we don't know what's going to happen um, you know, around the world, there, there's talk in some places that lockdowns may be extended in Ireland. We're looking at gradually easing them, but nobody knows the timeline when, when this is going to happen. And so for us, this was what we wanted to do was try to offer certainty where we could. And that was by launching what we have called our on time online initiative. And I'm going to talk about that. Now, the on time online initiative, right? It and right now it applies to post grad study for uh, direct DCU students. Uh, for undergrad students, it's a little bit more uncertain because we in Ireland, our big state exams have been postponed until August. And so right now, um, everyone is trying to figure out for undergrad students when exactly the uh, academic year will start. And that's why we can't offer that certainty right now but there will be a decision very soon on that. And you can see, I think, um, that DCU really tries to take the interests of the students to heart and really tries to offer certainty wherever we can. So that I'm sure is what we will endeavor to do when it comes to undergrads. But the On Time Online Initiative, what is it? Well, it, it's, an, it's our effort to ensure that those students who um, you know, had made plans, had had wanted to study abroad, had had uh, you know, all everything was in place, and then this COVID situation happened, and you know, they didn't want to defer. This is the opportunity for their students to ensure that they can graduate on time, that they can begin their studies this academic year, and they can complete their studies um, in 2021 rather than deferring for a year. Okay. And what it means is that for the first semester, so for our uh, semesters in Ireland run, semester one is September to December with exams in January. Semester two is really uh, February to April with exams in May. And then for a postgrad level, the summer is where you do your research or you do the practical. So for DCU, what the on time online initiative means is that for semester one, classes will be online. OK, so students will not come to Ireland. They will study online and then they will come to Ireland for second semester. So um, they were going to do a number of webinars in the coming weeks with academics who will talk about what exactly that process is going to look like. But what it will mean is there will be online lectures, but they will be recorded and they will be offered to, to students because we understand time differences mean that it, not everything will be convenient. So we will work with students as much as is reasonably possible to ensure that everyone has um, the, the right opportunity to, to learn. Um, but this is DC, what DCU is trying to do in order um, to, to ensure that students can. We, we felt that the reality is, is that social distancing measures in Ireland are probably going to be in place for some time. So having large groups of people together uh, was really unlikely in, in September and we needed to offer that certainty. And so that's what we have endeavored to do. Now, even though things will be online, there will st it's not just like you won't have your supports available. All of the supports that are available will still be available in an online format. So the library, for example, students will still be able to access all of the journals, all of the periodicals. So you will still very much be a DCU student. For any student who is going down this model of the on time online, you will still be a, D a DCU student. Student Support and Development, which is SSND, um, known uh, if you're on the website, you'll see SSND everywhere. They are providing things like the Writing Center, the Mathematics Learning Center, and the Career Service. They are all available online. So, you know, you would zoom in. They will they will hold a lot of uh, you know their workshops. They will do one to ones. Um, unfortunately, all of that can be done online so it's not like any of that is going to to disappear so that will be available to you 
the careers portal and I'll talk a little bit more about careers in a little while because I, I really think it is one of the areas where DCU is, is particularly strong but you'll still have access to the CV clinics you'll still have those one-to-one -one appointments with uh, career advisors to hone your interview techniques to learn about how to tailor your CV to the Irish market they will hold webinars on you know what what are the differences in the Irish market what's the culture of the Irish workplace so all of those things will still happen and so you'll be ready to hit the ground when you you come to Ireland then in semester two so you will have those supports and I think that's important to emphasize it's not like any of this will will disappear for you so a couple of things that um, you know the that that have come up queries that people have had and I will endeavor to answer what I can we don't have every single answer it is a situation that's in flux and we will have webinars with academics who'll be better able to, to do that so we I suppose we have there there's two things to consider one is DCU has offered online classes for a long time in a number of different ways and the the learnings from this semester this semester classes had to end in March and everybody moved to an online teaching model so there's a lot of learning from that and that will be utilized uh, when it comes to uh, teaching in semester one of the 2020 uh, 2021 academic year and so the the benefits are that it will allow you to start on time rather than deferring until um, September 2021 and uh, pushing things back a whole year this allows you to start on time to learn online for the first semester and then to come to Dublin and you will still have that experience in Dublin and you'll still have access to the third level graduate scheme which is the stay back um, program the stay back visa as people refer to it as there, there still will be students from around the world. Um, they, we are very much open for business, and uh, we've had since we launched this initiative, we've heard from a lot of students that they are happy to to go ahead. They recognise that they that by the time they graduate, you know, this will all should all be over. There will be the vaccines and treatments available. The world will be back to normal. And so they want to, to be graduates in, uh, you know, September 2021 or, or as close to, to that, say, if they're doing undergraduate studies, they don't want to push it back a year. But if people do, obviously, that is an option as well. But we wanted to provide people with different options so that they could know what they wanted to do and make the decisions themselves rather than us forcing it on them. The degrees will absolutely still be recognized. Um, the plan is this is the first semester, so there, it's not going to go on your transcripts, it's not going to go on your parchment for your, for your degree um, or anything like that. This is, you. it's very much you know it's um it's 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 distance learning you know it's not it's not like the way in which online doing an online program um throughout your study would be um there will very much be interaction uh with the lecturers and with the support services as i mentioned the other the other thing is i suppose the questions are around the start date so we plan to start on time that is the plan so the plan would be that in uh, kind of the uh, September the 21st that's when um, these courses would start there would probably be orientation um, we are ironing out the exact details around that we will provide that um, a number of students have asked us um, can they start their course in in January and it's not something that we have at DCU because uh, we have one course that has a, a, a January start but the issue is then that that course takes 18 months and that would be the case if we did that with all our courses suddenly you'd be adding an additional six months an additional six months of expense um, to students and it would have an impact on on the university so it is not something dcu offers uh we i suppose the the way in which it works for us is the is the September start. So um, DCU does not have the January start apart from one course and for the, the, the foundation program. OK, those are the two. So because those, those are tailored already and they were already in place, um, they 
they they can they can be um, they can be taken. But outside of that, for any of DCU's traditional courses, um, to change would mean adding an additional six months, and it's not something what, what we wanted to do. There've been a lot of people have asked questions around what if everything settles down in September. We are monitoring the situation, but realistically. Um, I, I, if you have been following the news, um, the, the chief medical officer in the UK said, you know, that it's really unlikely that we're going to, to see, you know, social distancing change before the end of the, the calendar year. And that is the advice that the Irish chief medical officer is saying as well. So we think it is extremely unlikely. Obviously, look, if, if somebody creates a vaccine and the, we can go back to, to gathering in large groups. We would love that. I think everyone everyone would. It would make uh, life you know, much easier again. But the re we have to deal with what the, the, the reality will likely be, what the uh, government officials, the health officials, the statisticians are all telling us. And they're telling us that realistically, that won't be the case in September. But we will monitor it, and obviously, if things change, we would let you know. But we think it is extremely unlikely. So everything is uh, proceeding on the basis of first semester being online, but second semester students being on campus. Um, the the thing to bear in mind, though, is that visas are required before starting any course at DCU. Doesn't matter what the course is, you're going to need to get your visa. Um, because that that's important so that you know that we don't want students starting a course and then finding out that they got a visa rejected and then they're halfway through a course. So for us, it's really, really important. You will have to get your visa before commencing the, the course. OK, and the other thing is that the question around um, on campus accommodation, it will be available to students who are arriving uh, for uh, semester two, and I'll talk again a little bit more about that later on. Um, so hopefully that's kind of given you an overview of um, the on time online initiative. And, you know, I think it, hopefully you recognize that you still will be a DCU student. There, there is no change in, in that. All of the support structures will be available to you. And like, the a lot of the the online learning mechanisms were being used already um so we, the virtual learning environment at dcu that's called loop loop existed but it probably wasn't utilized as much as as it could have been and now i think students are seeing the value the true value of loop and the way in which you can access lectures and other resources on, on loop and you'll be able to have direct access to the module coordinators You'll still be eligible for the the stay back, um, you know, the the stamp one G, the stay back visa um, as it's referred to, um, and you you will become when you graduate a DCU alum. You'll be part of an alumni network that uh, around the world that's really strong and that looks out for one another, and you will have those graduate employment opportunities that I talked about, and the I think it's. You can see there, like uh, the QS rankings, as I said, number one in Ireland and number 19 in the world. Now, there have been questions around, like, what's what's that going to look like when we come out the other side of this? Like the impact of COVID-19, a lot of people worried about the economy. Well, you can see there that the OECD has said that they expect the impact of coronavirus will be the least severe in Ireland and that the economy could have a relatively rapid recovery. I talked about Ireland being the Silicon Valley of, U of Europe and that will be to our benefit. You can see their story in the Wall Street Journal that big tech is still hiring and in Business Insider, you can see that during the last recession, big tech companies still hired aggressively and they're going to do that again. Facebook have talked about taking on an additional 10,000 workers this year. The, the, the world, I suppose, we've seen now um, the benefits of data and that data analysis will, will continue. So um, Google, Apple, Amazon, all of them have been exceptionally busy during these times and they will provide opportunities to our graduates. 
I think this is important as well, just so you can see just how many of the companies are in Dublin, okay? The software companies, the ICT, financial services, pharmaceutical companies and medical tech, all of these are areas that are still um, busy and that will become probably busier as time goes on. So there will be opportunities and Ireland is well placed and our graduates will be very well placed to take advantage of these opportunities. So I think that's important to highlight that you realize that Yes, that right now um, there are restrictions. We are working from home. Things, uh, many businesses are not directly open, but online is still open, and people are still um, buying online, still purchasing. Deliveries are still happening in Ireland, so it's not like everything has completely closed down. It's it's just I suppose our our new normal for for right now. And our careers um, service, they're, they're really a, a great um, service and can, can stand, uh, you know, proudly tall in the way in which they help students. So there are careers fairs which take place. Now, many of those have moved to virtual fairs, but for second semester, they will be back on campus. They meet students. There are, there are big fairs. There are individual companies that come. And a lot of the tech companies hold open days where they invite students uh, to register and to come and, and, and spend a day with them. Uh, Google did that. Facebook do that. Those events usually take place in March and April. So if you're coming for semester two, that will still be open to you. Um, and international students are able to work in Ireland when you are registered with the immigration authorities. You can work for 20 hours a week during term and 40 hours a week outside a term. And there is that stay back option, the one year uh, for those who graduate from an undergraduate program and two years for those who graduate from a postgraduate program. So there, I just think it's important to highlight that the opportunities still exist in Ireland and will continue to, to do so. I think talk, wanted to talk a little bit around you know the the support services that I've mentioned. So there are lots of different areas. It's it's uh, not just one area, and all of those will still be available. You'll still be able to to access advice. You'll still be able to to access all all of those services. And I think they're um, a testimonial from one of our uh, students from international students from India and uh, talking just about his experience and I suppose the, the support that he felt um, that DCU offered to him. And I think that again is one of DCU's strong points. While we have a very diverse student cohort, we don't have a massive student cohort. So you don't get lost in uh, the, the mix at DCU, you really matter. And we, we endeavor to really help students we, uh, as much as we possibly can. And you can see, I suppose he's talking about the attractions of DCU and around Dublin and around Ireland. And I think it's those three combined that d make DCU such a, a great choice for students. And, and the fact that it does have so much uh, to offer and the fact that you will learn so much by studying here. Um, now we can make this presentation available so that everyone will still have it and Jacob is recording it. So there will be uh, a, an opportunity to see all of this again. Um, they, when you do come to campus in semester two, you will have access to the on-campus facility. So you will have access to the, the new student center and the sports facilities at DCU are absolutely incredible. Uh, and we do have a cricket team for anyone who is wondering. And we do have an Indian student society. And there's also um, a society that does a lot of trips around Ireland. So you get to see things like the Cliffs of Moher. You get to see Cork and Kerry and beautiful parts of, of the country. So all of that will still be taking place in, in semester two and on campus as well. There are you know, facilities that students need. There's a bank and a pharmacy. So all of that will be available to you. So 
I, I mentioned around some of the clubs and societies and they are a heartbeat and they have still been the heartbeat of the institution even during this COVID-19 situation. They were hosting all sorts of online events. So students uh, were getting academic support and career support uh, from the institution, but they were getting um, through their fellow students, they were also getting the social side of things. So our clubs and societies still held events online weekly and it gave uh, students the opportunity to meet virtually and to, to interact. So there's a huge benefit to getting involved in clubs and societies in, in Ireland. It can be stuff that you're you know, already interested in like cricket, but maybe it's something that you want to try something brand new um, or you know, and that option is, is available to you. We encourage students to spend some of their time, uh, you know, um, outside of the classroom, outside of the library and engaging with other students. It helps you develop those communication skills, which will be vital to you when you graduate and you are looking for a job. Now, talking about Dublin, um, I, I am originally from the south of Ireland, from Cork, which is Ireland's second city. I came to, to Dublin about 14 years ago and I love Dublin. I think it really is a, a friendly and warm and welcoming city. Uh, it is very easy to get around Europe from, from Dublin. The lovely thing about Dublin is that you're in a metropolitan city, a, a truly global, diverse city um, with a thriving like uh, economy. But if you get on public transport, if you get a bus or you get the light rail system, which is called the DART, you can be out uh, in, by the, the sea um, because we are, it is a port city and you can be right out by the sea. There are some lovely seaside villages. So weekends can be spent outside the city. There's a lot of kind of hikes and walks that you can uh, see. And the nice thing about Ireland is the fact that the weather, um, it's never extreme. We, it's, we never really, really cold. It's never really, really warm. So it means you have the opportunity to get out and about all year round. There's a huge amount of culture um, taking place. There are lots of free events that take place in Dublin. And as I mentioned, it is the tech hub uh, of Europe. So just to look at accommodation, there are uh, on-campus accommodation. There will be on-campus accommodation av options available and more information will be available as we move into the summer about exactly what will be available for semester two. So that's going to be the on-campus. Now DCU has three different main teaching campuses and there is accommodation available in each of the, the campuses. So there are different types of accommodation available. Then there is the um, off-campus accommodation and um, the, a lot of this you're not going to need right, right now, but you can start doing your research. And I think one of the things that um, this COVID situation has highlighted is, um, you know, that uh, it has helped the accommodation situation in Ireland. So we have seen more accommodation available and um, many students do choose to live off campus, either in a host family or to get their own accommodation. So it depends, I suppose, on what you want, your budget, and I suppose the, the, where you are at in your studies. Uh, for those beginning uh, a foundation program on campus or host family might be the right option for you. If you're a direct postgrad student, you might prefer to, to look for your own place. So um, there, the, we can provide all this information to you. Dublin is divided by the River Liffey, which runs through the middle, and that divides the city north and south. So essentially the odd numbers are on the north side of the, the city and the even numbers are on the south side. So, and uh, generally the, the lower the number, the closer you are to the city center. Um, and you can see uh, the map there. So one and two are traditionally the city center, but um, because it's Ireland and not Germany, Dublin 7 is, is actually closer to the city centre than Dublin 5. Now, I live in Dublin 8 myself, which is in the south side, and yet I'm able to walk to work every day in um, DCU um, in, in, in the Glasnevin campus. So Dublin is a compact city, okay, and there are a lot of different um, transportation options available. We have a really strong public transport network 
buses there is, are there's what also uh the light rail system i mentioned the dart and there's also the lewis uh which is a tram system that runs through the city so lots and lots of different uh, options um there's the purpose-built student accommodation options that are available um, and the the only thing I'd say is do your research now. Um, but you and we, we'll we'll do further webinars uh, in the future just to talk to you about like to ensure that you you don't go paying money right now. Okay, um, you, you need to see a place in person before you ever uh, hand over any money. But if what it means is that you now have some additional time to do your research and i think that's one of the proactive things that you can do is to really use the additional time to do research into dublin into dcu into ireland and make your list of things that you really want to do after you get here so around the the irish visa so right now there's a temporary pause on visa applications so again, you can use this time wisely. You can use it to gather your documentation. In Ireland, we are a nation of storytellers, okay? And we love to understand your story. So applying for a visa in Ireland is a little bit different from applying in the UK. In Ireland, they want to understand your story, your journey. Why is it that you are you know, coming to Ireland to study? What do you hope to, to achieve afterwards? How are you going to finance it? So the, the, the story is the how and the why is really important in Ireland, okay? So that is just something to consider. Now, I mentioned that um, earlier on that the I Irish immigration authorities, I think, have been really positive in the moves they have taken uh, around um, this co current COVID situation. They're, they're really um, helping students who are here. Ha they have had to pause applications temporarily, but they will get that back up and running as soon as it is safe. And they publish the information on the website. They're really quick to get it out there. And as soon as things change, we will look to get that information out to you it'll um you know we we're in touch constantly with jacob and the educo team and so that information will get out to you once things are up and running again and as i said they're beginning to look to ease the restrictions from the 5th of may we don't net yet know what exactly that will look like but let's uh, wait and see how that goes um a couple of things there in terms of how you can follow us and i suppose the important thing to to realize is that you know, the, the beauty of Ireland is there and uh, it, it awaits you. I think I would encourage you all to check out our social media accounts. OK, we're, we're very active. The DC, the main DCU accounts, but also the um, the, the DCU international accounts. We uh, pretty active Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. But, and I would say check out both the main account and the DCU international account. You'll get a lot of information there. You'll see student testimonials in video form, in blogs, um, and also on, on LinkedIn. And um, that's one of the things I, I, I probably would say as well um, as we move towards the end of this. I think one of the things that students can do right now uh, while you have that extra time while you're um, is to get yourself ready for the career opportunities that i talked about and so what i would say is that you should really look if you don't have a linkedin profile set one up and if you do have one already set up make sure that it is as good as it can possibly be so read up on the best practice approaches to it maybe you set it up a couple of years ago and your photo isn't as good as it should be that's one area make sure it's up to date it's relevant and so that you are ready to take advantage of the opportunities when you come to ireland but right now um that's the end of the presentation i will say gurav magut which is irish for thank you and um we can certainly take some uh questions this is going this is only um one of the webinars that we will be doing okay we are going to continue to do webinars as information becomes available and we will continue to provide that information to you so don't feel like this is the the only uh one of these that you will have we will continue to to provide these to you and i'll continue to work with jacob and the team to get the information to you Colm, thank you very much for that fantastic presentation.